Good morning, boys and girls. Miss Stephanie and Audrey are back together um, today to lead you in another Sunday School lesson. We hope you enjoyed our lesson from last week where we were learning about the Holy Trinity, about um, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, we hope you enjoyed that lesson, and we hope you are ready to get started on another lesson this week. We are so glad to be with you, and we look forward to learning together um, this new lesson. Um, this week, we are going to read a story from the book of Romans. Um, a guy named Paul wrote this book of the Bible. He wrote Romans. Um, and in the story this week, um, he is writing a letter to a group of new Christians in the city of Rome that he has never met before. Um, and in this letter, he is writing to tell these new Christians about God's gift of grace. In the letter, he explains to um, this group of people that grace is not something that you can earn. It's not something that you can... Um, work really hard and get rewarded for, but it's something that God gives us all freely when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Um, so we are going to read as, um, the book of Romans. It's chapter 5, verses 1 through 8 that we're going to be reading today. But before we um, start our story today, I want to start um, with the sign of the cross. So if you'll remember last week, we talked about the sign of the cross a little bit and we practiced it a couple of times. And I encouraged y'all to make me try to do it at home throughout the week so you could remember to do it. Um, but I'll do it today and then y'all can do it with me and um, hopefully you'll remember from last week. So remember, we start off by saying in the name of the Father and we touch our forehead and of the Son and then you touch your chest and, then, and of the Holy Spirit and you touch your left and your right shoulder. And then you say, Amen. So let's try to do it together one more time. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So um, maybe y'all can continue doing it a little bit at home with your family this week so we can continue to um, be familiar with it. But um, so as I was talking about, um, we were talking about Paul and how he was writing to the Christians um, in Rome, the new Christians. Um, before we start into our story, I wanted to talk about some signs of hope that we as Christians have. Um, and I printed out a few pictures to show you guys. Um, one of the pictures that we as Christians have that's a sign of hope is the dove. So this is a type of bird. So I just printed out a picture for y'all to see. Um, sometimes it's easy if we have a picture, um, we can kind of really visualize what we're talking about. But the dove is a sign of hope. And then another sign of hope is the olive branch. So this is a picture of an olive branch. Um, and then finally, printed out one other picture. And this picture is probably the most well-known um, picture um, that's a sign of hope uh, for the church. And it is the cross. So we see a cross a lot while we're at church, whether, um, whether at church or maybe in our Bibles or maybe in a book we're reading. Um, but anytime we look at the cross, we think of Jesus and how he died on the cross for us and how our, fin our sins were forgiven. Um, and now we'll know that the cross is also a sign of hope for the church. Um, so one of the fun activities that we did while we were preparing for our Sunday school lesson this week was I printed out this picture of a cross and then we colored it. Um, so maybe at home, if y'all have a printer and y'all can print out a picture of a cross, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. We did ours kind of in a mosaic kind of format, but it can look however you want it to look. Um, or if you don't have a printer, I think your parents could probably easily draw a cross for you. This is a um, pretty easy activity. You just have to have paper and then markers or crayons. And what we plan to do with our cross is we plan to either leave it out in a central location in our house, like maybe our kitchen, or maybe even put it in one of our bedrooms where whenever we look at it, we can remember our Sunday school lesson this week, and we can remember how it's a sign of hope for us. So this might be a fun activity that y'all might enjoy doing this week. But let's get back to our story. So Paul was one of Jesus's most important followers. And if you'll remember from last week, we talked about how a follower was a disciple of Jesus. Um, but then after Jesus went to heaven, Paul um, started to travel the world telling people about Jesus. And again, last week we learned that um, someone that spreads the word about Jesus is known as an apostle. So Paul was a disciple and then he became an apostle. 
Um, but during the time that Paul was traveling to spread the word about Jesus, um, it was kind of hard to travel. We talked about this several weeks ago. There were no airplanes, there were no cars or buses or trains or anything like that. Um, so remember if he went like a really long distance, he might would ride in a boat. Um, or if he went maybe shorter distances, he would either have to walk or um, if he had a donkey or a horse, maybe he could ride on one of those. But um, back in those times, it was kind of hard to spread the word about Jesus. It definitely was not as easy as it is today. So because it was so difficult, it might have taken kind of a long time to really spread the word to a lot of different people. Um, Paul wrote 13 letters that are part of the New Testament, part of the Bible. This summer, we are going to spend a lot of time learning about Romans. The long letter, Romans is the long letter that Paul wrote to the new Christians in the city of Rome. So let's learn more about the people Paul was writing to. And this week, I'm not going to read from our um, Bible storybook. I'm going to read from one of Audrey's Bibles. And so if y'all have your Bible close by, and if you would like to, your parents can help you find the book of Romans. It's kind of in the back of the book. Um, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. So if you'll turn your listening ears on, um, I'm going to read this passage to y'all. And then when we get done, we'll go over some questions that we can answer together. So again, it's Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. We have been made right with God because of our faith. So we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our faith, Christ has brought us into that blessing of God's grace that we now enjoy. And we are happy because of the hope we have of sharing God's glory. And we also have joy with our troubles because we know that these troubles produce patience. And patience produces character, and character produces hope. And this hope will never disappoint us because God has poured out his love to fill our hearts. God gave us his love through the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to us. Christ died for us while we were still weak. We were living against God, but at the right time, Christ died for us. Very few people will die to save the life of someone else. Although perhaps for a good man, someone may possibly die. But Christ died for us while we were still sinners. In this way, God shows his great love for us. So that's Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Um, so here are a few questions we can talk about. Um, we can discuss them with um, between Audrey and myself, but also you can talk about them at home with your family. How long... Do you think it took for Paul's letter to the Romans to get to all the house churches in Rome? So back in those times when Paul was writing his letter um, to share the good news about Jesus, um, it wasn't one big church. It was several smaller churches that met in people's homes. So he would send the letter or, or take the letter, and then um, they would have to share them with all the different um, churches that met in the different houses. Um, so the question was, how long do you think it took for Paul's letter to the Romans to get to all the house churches in Rome. I think it would take probably several weeks, maybe even a month, to get all to the churches since they were small, not like one big church. That's right. It might have probably taken a long time. One, it probably took a long time because it kind of took a long time to get um, where it needed to go. So if Paul was far away, it took an even longer time, um, depending on how he had to get there, whether it was by boat or walking. Um, but also because all the different smaller house churches had to share the letter, it probably took some time for it to spread to the whole group of, of new Christians. If Paul were writing to churches today, how do you think he might do it? He might do it from a car, a bus, a train, if it was a really long distance, an airplane, a helicopter, or a boat. Right. He might, if he was sending a letter, he could maybe take it that way if it was a long distance. Or... He might not even send a letter. Today, we have other um, means of communicating. We could use our cell phone and call the we new Christians. FaceTime, we could email, FaceTime, text. email, text. We have Because of the new electronics that we have that Paul did not have, um, we have ways of kind of getting information to people like really quickly. Um, so maybe that he might use one of those modes of um, communication if he was alive today telling people about Jesus. Question number three, when do you send someone a card, a letter, or an email? So when is a time that you would send somebody a card or a letter or an email? Can you think of a time? I think it would be when someone's birthday is, right. 
or like if a family member died or if um some or if someone just accepted God into their heart stuff like that that's right so during kind of special occasions yeah. um you usually send a card or a letter but another time that I just thought about so since we've been kind of um staying home a lot recently. Audrey has been sending letters to her cousins and her friends, um, and that's been a really good way for her to stay connected to these people while she couldn't see them like face to face. Um, so she's been doing little arts and crafts or coloring a picture um, and mailing those, and that has been a really good way to stay connected um, to people we don't get to see all the time. And then finally, our last two questions. The first one is, how do you receive really important news today? How do we receive really important news? Um, calling, texting, if it's like really, really, really important, they actually come in person. That's right, because um, people can get here quicker. Letters, mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's right, and then also people read the newspaper. Yeah. Um, and people can get an electronic newspaper paper these days, so news. sit to them, um, yeah, watching the news, that's mm -hmm. a good one. Um, so that's kind of how we receive important news today. And then finally, our last question for today is, how do you pass on really important news? Well, when you figure out about it, you might write a letter to someone. Or if it's like your neighbor or someone in your neighborhood, you might go to them and tell them, and then they would pass it along. And then whoever they taught it to would probably pass it along, and then just would go in like a long chain. That's right. You can pass it along by word of mouth or by, um, sometimes if I see like a news article online, I might um, copy the link and I can text it to somebody that I want to share it with. So we have a lot of ways right now that we can pass on important information, not just back in Paul's day, it was word of mouth or writing a letter, but we have a lot of other um, ways that we can pass on information. So if y'all would like to discuss this more at home with your family, feel free. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other answers to some of these questions that we didn't think of that maybe y'all have thought of. And so y'all can share that with your siblings or with your parents. Um, finally, another activity I was thinking might be fun to do is we've been talking about how Paul wrote a letter um, to the new churches and how they shared um, his letter of uh, sharing about Jesus with each other. And so here's just a plain envelope. So if y'all have an envelope at home and a piece of paper, you might write a letter to someone and um, in your letter, you can maybe tell them something good about Jesus that you know that you would like to share with them. And then in that letter, you can ask them to share it with someone else. So say maybe you wrote a letter to um, your aunt or uncle. Um, maybe they could share it with, one, um, with their children, your cousins, something good that you sh um, wanted to tell them about Jesus. Or you could send it to... Um, somebody in your neighborhood or your grandparents and possibly they could share um, that good news about Jesus with someone else and then you could um, be a Paul you could be sharing the news of Jesus so that's just another um, little activity I thought would go well with our lesson today and something pretty easy and simple that you could do from home um, Another activity I thought, and this is something that really doesn't require any materials at all, is um, I thought together as with, with your family, you could possibly sing, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. This is a song that pretty much everybody knows the words to, and um, it goes really well with the lesson because it's reminding us that Jesus, um, He's got me, and He's got you, and He's got our family and our friends. And even one lyric says, you could say, He's got Starkville, Mississippi in His hands. If you went through chair choir at Starkville First United Methodist, um, I remember Miss Gay would always add that line in um, that he's got Starkville, Mississippi in his hands. Um, and so that's just a really good reminder that um, Jesus' grace and his love is free if, when we ask him into our hearts. Um, and that no matter what's going on in the world around us or um, in our home, that Jesus has us in his hands. He's going to take care of us, provide for us. Um, and we just have to believe and trust and accept his grace. Um, so that might be a good activity that y'all might enjoy doing from home. Um, 
And then finally, I'm about to close us in prayer, but before I do, there was one last activity I wanted to share. Um, these are just suggestions. Um, Y'all might not have time to do all of them, but these are just suggestions that I thought go along nicely with our lesson. So it um, would help y'all to remember what we learned about today, how um, Paul shared the good news of Jesus with these new churches, and how um, part of what he was sharing was about Jesus's grace and how that grace is given to us freely when we accept Jesus into our hearts. Um, so we made a prayer chain. So we just took some paper we had at home. We decided to do it for the week. So we did seven little um, chains, chain links. And, um, but y'all don't have to do a whole week. Y'all could just do a couple days or you could do the month, whichever y'all decide to do. But um, what we did is we wrote on there things for each day that we hope. So like our first one says, I hope that we will accept God's gift of grace. And then our next one says, I hope that parents pray with their kids. And so what we plan to do is each day we plan to tear off one of these links. We plan to read what we hope, what we wrote that we hope for, and then we plan to pray over that. Um, so this could be just a good activity y'all could even do together as a family. Um, but just a suggestion of something fun to do, and um, it doesn't require a lot of materials or a lot of time, um, but it really, I think, will help you to remember what we've learned about this week. Um, so if everybody will bow their heads, I'm going to close us in prayer. Um, so bow your heads and close your eyes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for today. Thank you for this coming up week. Thank you for your love. Thank you for disciples and apostles like Paul that um, were writing to Christians way back a long time ago, but that still apply to us today to help us to remember that your love and your grace are freely given. And we just have to choose to accept you and ask you into our hearts. Thank you for this time to come together and to learn about you. I pray that this lesson is a blessing for others. And I pray that as we go about our week, we can continue to remember um, that your love is freely given to us and, and that we can be a blessing to others because of your grace and your love, that it will pour out of us and bless another person in our lives. Thank you for today. Um, I ask that you go before us this week, and I ask that we all come back together next week ready to learn more about you and your love. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us again this week. We enjoy this time to come together and um, hopefully to teach y'all a little bit about Jesus. And we hope that y'all are enjoying this time too. We look forward to seeing you soon and we hope that you have a blessed week. See y'all next week. Bye-bye.